Hello and welcome to NJ Biz Conversations. I'm your host, Jeff Kanage. My guest today is Wendy Mader. She is the Vice President of the Employer uh, Commercial Employer Channel at Quest Diagnostics. Wendy, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, did I get did I get the title right? I just want to I do want to make sure I, I I didn't I didn't butcher that, that before too badly before we get going. Yeah, you got it right. My okay. job is to really uh, handle and and work with the commercial channel uh, for the employer businesses at Quest Diagnostics. Okay, and and I want to get into um, a, a, a good deal of detail about what you do and 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 what kind of um, uh, what kind of help you can you can give businesses. I first wanted to talk about about Quest itself, though. Um, it, it's easy to for, forget now, but back in the early days of of COVID, testing was really the only tool that public health authorities had. It was vitally important. There were no vaccines, there were no therapeutics that that really worked very well. All it was was testing, and Quest was was among the 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 most prominent, if not the most prominent um, testing company doing that. What was it like <laughs> at Quest back in those days? I mean, you had to keep working, obviously, but I'm guessing that the volume and pace must have just been um, off the charts. Yeah, we definitely kept working. Uh, I would say that for sure. Um, it was, and it was, a, you know, I was u- uniquely um, uh, positioned because employers were calling us um, day in and day out. Um, to ask for our help um, and also ask for our knowledge around what we thought they should do. Um, and, you know, having had the opportunity to be in the employer space for almost 20 years and working at high levels, it was really um, a, a unique situation that I've never, uh, I mean, no one lived, we're all, we're all, we all lived through a time that we never expected to live okay. through. But, you know, at Quest, I think I was super, our, from our leadership team all the way down to our frontline employees, um, we really um, navigated it, I, I think, really well. I mean, our job was to respond and respond in a really, um, really positive way in a manner that the country needed. And so working at Quest, it was probably one of the toughest times, but I've been with Quest for 15 years, but okay. also one of the rewarding times most rewarding times of my career. Um, And I couldn't be more proud with the response that Quest Diagnostics did. We had to stand up lab testing from one test um, out in our California lab to hundreds of thousands a day uh, testing. So really, really impressive what the team did. And from an employer standpoint, um, just being able to be that trusted advisor with the employers and just help them, um, whether they used our testing or not was one thing, but I really felt that it was our public health responsibility to educate them on the tools to enable them to keep their employees healthy okay. um, uh, and safe. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to say and safe, right? Okay. Um, not well, just healthy. Well, safe. Yes, that, that's actually what I was going to ask, because as, as I was talking to folks, business leaders, corporate executives, business owners, throughout that whole time, a big concern of theirs was, how do we get people, if, if we have to be open, and many, uh, for example, manufacturers in New Jersey had to be open, um, how, do we, how do we make our employees feel safe enough to, to come into work and, and do the jobs that they're doing? And that concern actually lingered after the vaccines were available. And to this day, I think their employers are still are still wrestling with that. Was that the biggest concern that you heard all the time is what do we do? How do we assure folks that it's okay to come to work? Yeah. How do we how do we assure people it's okay to come to work? How can we keep the lights on um, and get people in the offices, not offices, but in the facilities? A lot of a lot of the offices were closed. Right. So um, that was the biggest concern of the employers. Um, And, you know, there were a lot of solutions stood up to do that. I I mean, I've I don't think I've ever seen so much creativity in the field that I've worked in about how can we build solutions that really get after the needs and wants. And the agile ability and capability that I saw within our organization to turn on a dime was impressive. And and what I'm seeing us come out of this to say, hey, what did we learn about how we can be agile as a company to respond to the needs of the population, um, even more than we are uh, usually? Okay. So where are you now? I mean, are you still getting those kinds of questions? I still hear them sometimes, although much less often than, than I used to. Are, are employers still concerned? Are they still worried about 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 how things are going to go? Because COVID is still out there. I mean, there's still, you know, mm-hmm. thousands of cases a day. People are still dying. It's not, it's, it, we, a lot of folks want to pretend it's over or want to believe it's over, but it really isn't. Are you still hearing the same kinds of, of concerns? And if not, what are you hearing now from, from the people you're, you're talking to and you're working with? 
Yeah, uh, not as much, Jeff. Um, but we we do the concerns really are around how, when I have events for my employees. Okay. Can I make those events safe, a, a national sales meeting or something like that, that I want to pull hundreds of people together? Can I make sure that's safe? You know, they're really, that's where they're really kind of lagging behind um, and, and thinking about what do I need to do from a testing standpoint? How do I keep it safe? In the regular workplace, I think the employers have really navigated a different kind of working style and just navigating it from the environment um, a little bit more. So we don't hear it nearly as much. Um, but, you know, they're also understanding that testing is widely available and that people are very cognizant about not coming to work when they're sick and we have all the remote tools we need um, to do that. So I think we learned a lot about not coming into work sick as well. Um, and employers are really trying to manage it that way. Okay. All right. So what are, what put COVID aside for a moment, um, <laughs> what are the concerns that you deal with now? What Tell us a little bit about about, about what you do and, and what you what you hear from employers and, and what you can do for them or, or help them uh, accomplish on their own. Yeah, I mean, the, the biggest thing that, you know, I've worked on over the life of my career is keeping people healthy, right? Um, it kind of morphed into COVID um, and right. that was definitely keeping people healthy, yeah. but making their lives better uh, because how do I identify somebody who may have prediabetes and really help them get into a care pathway that supports them from maybe not getting diabetes, right? Um, and so as a employer, um, at working with employers, what we're coming out of this pandemic really seeing is that we need, there was a lot of deferred care. Um, and there's a, been a lot of employers that during the pandemic stopped um, they're kind of, you know, physical type programs, the programs of, hey, we need to get our employees screened and identify risks. Um, and we're coming out and we're seeing higher rates of uh, hypertension, diabetes, and, and even some of the data we've published around cancer as well. So I think it's important that we continue to work with employers to make sure that they're getting people into care pathways because it's difficult to get into a primary care doctor today too. Right. And so employers play a key role there. So part of my responsibility is definitely working on solutions to provide employers that kind of service. Um, I also have responsibility for our kind of safety and pre-employment drug testing business too. Um, which is definitely an important component as we've seen hiring happen as well. Um, and then finally, helping employers manage the, the spend that's going to come out of this deferred care problem mm -hmm. um, and the overall health care costs that happen there. And we're doing programs like uh, a program called Quest Select, which is a lab steerage lab program, basically enabling uh, lab, uh, enabling employees to understand that if they choose an in-network lab provider, they're going to have savings, less out-of-pocket spend for them and less cost to their employer. Okay. Um, it's a really neat employer program that can just, it, you know, uh, all it is is communication for them. Yeah. Well, there are there a couple of things that, that I did want to ask you about. The first has to do with deferred care. I heard a lot of that mostly from people in the in the in the in the healthcare industry about how difficult that problem was for them to deal with that, that folks were, were putting off with good reason mm -hmm. as a, and and in fact many of them had no choice but to put it off because there weren't the providers weren't weren't capable of dealing with covid and that at the same time how has that changed now what what you were doing before covid um how does it change what what are what are you hearing what do you what kind of advice do you give employers now about dealing with that 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 you that you maybe didn't do before how has that changed your approach to to dealing with these kinds of issues yeah. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, and so some of the things that I'm talking with employers about is, you know, before the pandemic, a lot of employers were leveraging something as simple as a lipid and glucose panel, right, uh, for their employees. What we're coming out of with is, you know, a lipid and an A1C, a more targeted test for diabetes, right, um, right. that can really get after it, but also adding components that get after things like chronic kidney disease, colorectal cancer screening things as we come out of this, because we're, we're dealing with more rates of diabetes, higher hypertensive numbers, which can downstream drive chronic kidney disease, which we know is a high expense for employers if somebody gets to that later stage. So we're talking about employers to say, hey, 
you know, you got to get your employees back into a screening type program uh, because they need to know it and they likely haven't been to a physician right. um, and you can make access Reddit more available to them. Um, also, the other thing, Jeff, that we have, you know, invested in is really it, the opportunity to speak with a physician about your results virtually. Um, and I think that's extremely important is can we get people into a a uh, physician or an opportunity to speak virtually with them. I think we we did have a lot of virtual care, and right. I saw in in some of my responsibilities is looking at what are what is that virtual care market for Quest Diagnostics? How to are they leveraging lab testing? Not as much as they should be. You still I can see you, but I I don't know how your glucose is doing. Right. If if I were a doctor, right? Um, and I think that's important that we can connect those two things together and make that virtual experience even better uh, because the doctor knows something physically about you. Okay. Now, you, the, the, other, uh, the other issue you mentioned with cost, um, and I can already hear some of, of, uh, some of the folks I've talked to say, what does this cost? What, 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 what do I get? If I do the kinds of things that, that you're suggesting that, that I do, what do I get out of it? I mean, the, the obvious answer is healthy employees. Is that worth the, the, the trade-off? Do you, do you hear those kinds of concerns about the cost to employers themselves in, in trying to do these kinds of things? doing wellness programs and, and trying to get folks to, to get ahead of their, of, of, of problems before they start. Is, is that something that, that you're still hearing or as, or as COVID changed that as well? It hasn't. I think you won't with anything. Um, you, you definitely go, okay, how, how, how is this going to help me with my healthcare costs? Right. right. And having been in this industry for a long time and really passionate about the fact that prevention really does help if there's anything we saw as the pandemic, we needed to continue to do prevention because right. the people who were sicker or had chronic conditions were more impacted, right? And, and when we think about what we're going to do moving forward is as an employer, all a lot of the healthcare costs goes right to the employer's bottom line, right? And right. for us, we want to make sure that we can prevent it. And you can't prevent anything unless you know about something you need to prevent, right? And so for us, it's really about, hey, enabling an employee to understand their where they're at in their journey and giving them the right tools to do that. So when we think about um, cost containment, if we can stop something from happening in the future, the great example I gave you was chronic kidney disease. Right. Mm -hmm. If I can keep somebody in stage one or two and not allow them to get stage four, and I'm an employer, I have a, a less expense. I do not have to have that employee off work for dialysis. They're managing it and they're keeping it in a place where they are they are managing it without extreme expense, which that can cause. Okay. Now, Quest um, is also an employer. <laughs> uh, do you is the company an example? Can you point to to things that Quest does that 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 employers uh, generally should do? I mean, what kind of program do do you folks have? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Quest is a 20-year uh, customer of mine, right? <laughs> um, and so I get the, I, I, you know, Quest is a customer and a partner uh, of ours is a business, right? Um, right? And part of our innovation opportunity. So at Quest Diagnostics, we, we offer um, what we call Blueprint for Wellness, and it is part of our culture. We start with the screening, we take the screening information, and route people into different care pathways. So I mentioned diabetes, we route people into diabetes management programs based on results and enable them to opt into those programs and, and get after you know, managing their condition. Um, Pre-diabetes is the same thing. We have the same kind of programs um, for those. And, and one great thing is, and is we we started a chronic kidney disease program for our employees, um, mm -hmm. essentially enabling them to really understand their risk and routing them into high end doctors that can support them uh, that were in network for us. And so we've really we really take it condition by condition to really kind of help employers employees, but it is it's condition by condition, but it's holistic, right? Looking okay. at somebody's health. So. All right. Um, we've got great outcomes of those programs um, that we've done. And, you know, my favorite thing to say is it's it's good to hear that we can also change somebody's life tra trajectory because they know better about their health. 
Right. And are those, those things are, are translatable to other businesses, especially smaller businesses, because that's, that's what I'm also starting to think of is, and what I hear over and over again, you know, we're not as big as quest. <laughs> we, we have, you know, 10, 15 employees, maybe, um, are the, these are things that, that, that businesses of any size can do. Um, does it matter really how, how, how the kinds of resources that a business has, I'm guessing that there must be some customization here, depending on, on what you're, what the kind of business that you're dealing with. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a person's a person, right? Regardless of how big the company is they work in, they all need to know this, right? And so, um, yeah, we we service thousands of employers, um, you know, from 50 employees, you know, up to 500,000, right, um, type of employers. And we'll, we'll serve them where they need to be serviced, right? Or so we, we do on-site events. So we'll come to the employer's location. We'll go into our enable our patient service center network, our 2,200 patient service centers for an employee to walk in, um, schedule an appointment and get their blood drawn. Um, and also their height, weight and blood pressure measured too as part of the program in our patient service center network. Then we also, because of coming out of the pandemic, we learned a lot about home kits okay. in, in home testing. Actually, behind me, you can see our home kit. Um, that is a important innovation that we've done at Quest Diagnostics is enabling our testing to be done at in home um, from a self collection standpoint. I think we all learned how to swab our nose. We're really good at that now. <laughs> yes. uh, we're also teaching people how to do finger sticks and, and different collection methods too. Um, and, and that works for employers of all sizes. Okay. All right. You've been generous with your time. Just one more thing before I, I let you go. I'm curious, what are the, the, the two or three biggest takeaways that, that employers that a, that you got out of, out of the past few years and your experience dealing with COVID and, and dealing with employers and what should employers take away um, themselves from, from this experience and, and what they should be doing? Yeah. Um, I think employers, uh, well, the first thing I got is that innovation in healthcare is can happen and it can happen quickly and people are really creative and we can we we can make solutions that really work uh, for employers whether that be Quest Diagnostics or other companies and um, and I'm I'm thrilled to see what has happened and what we did for employers um, and and that we can be a trusted partner that can help them stay in business. Okay. Um, that was a, a time like no other coming out you know what right. I really learned there, mm -hmm. right. Um, the, the other thing, when I think about um, what employers should take away is that we cannot forget that there, there, was a, there is a mental health crisis out there. And, and I didn't mention that as right. things that we're paying attention to, but employers need to recognize that mental and physical health are both very important and very inter intertwined. And we can't forget that. Um, right. So invest, you got to invest in the person as a whole, um, but we cannot forget that we need to enable convenient access of care and make it easy for employees to access care. And that starts in many cases with them understanding what, what is going on within them. Okay. Well, that's, that's sage counsel as, as far as I'm concerned. Wendy Mader, uh, Vice President, Commercial Employer Channel at Quest Diagnostics. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me. I really appreciate it. This has been fascinating and I'm sure useful information. I really appreciate you taking the time. Absolutely. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. And thank you all for watching. Until next time, stay safe, everyone, and figure out what you need to test for, as, as Ms. Mader can, can, and can help you with that.